I think the company is going to continue to grow quickly, which means we have to continue to evolve on how nimble we are and how scalable we're putting together our processes. So we're working hard on that. We're, you know, reinventing the pieces of IT and our talents that need to be. Once again, we're doing a lot of online seminars, online training. You know, we're not all traveling to uh, conferences and train like we used to, but we're, we've shifted and we're doing that all online. Um, hiring new people where applicable and necessary to keep up with our newer technologies. And we also have a healthy innovation budget where we're bringing the right technologies to the table so that we can continue to scale on this unprecedented growth we're on and continue to keep ourselves secure. So we're going to have a lot of security initiatives to continue to keep uh, our company, our people and our data safe, while at the same time, making sure that we can keep up with this steep growth curve that we're on. I think that um, automation is going to continue to be more and more important. And by automation, it could be system automation, you know, bots and robotic process automation and things that take what the back office and the operations people do in systems and automate that. So I think that's going to continue to be a differentiator uh, in the 3PL world and, and supply chain in general. And I also believe another huge component is gonna be analytics to allow companies to become more and more data-driven with their decisions. So we're investing heavily in both of those areas. We have a lot of uh, POCs and prototypes that are starting to bear some fruit. But I think those are uh, two huge trends that are not only applicable to NFI IT, but supply chain IT in general. Capacity is gonna be tight and choppy at best. Having more real-time visibility into the product in your supply chain, be able to forecast your needs a little more than you already do is going to be huge. And then once you understand those needs, having a solid relationship with a provider like NFI should help mitigate some of those challenges and weather the storm. Capacity will be tight and there's going to be more choppiness, both depending on where this pandemic plays out and geopolitical um, climate. So I think that's going to, it's going to be a really interesting year in 2021. I think there's going to be a lot more technology in supply chain. I see a big trend with the supply chain business leaders becoming tighter partners with supply chain IT and technology leaders. Real-time visibility, the analytics behind what's going on in the supply chain is going to become more and more important on an accelerated curve than it has been in the last several years. Once again, I think automation is going to be huge, both systemic automation, things we talked about like robotic process automation, bots to make decisions, et cetera, but also um, robotic automation uh, out on the floor um, and anywhere else in the supply chain. I think those trends are going to accelerate um, in 2021 and for the next couple of years. Efficiency. Capacity is tight, costing more to ship product, costing more to get product across the ocean. So I think to get efficiency into the system, automation is going to become a requirement for anyone to scale. And those who can't scale are going to fight tight, tight competition to stay in business, right? We're seeing that um, with some of our smaller competitors struggling. And we're seeing that with a lot of retailers struggling to stay in business as everyone shifts their focus to shopping online. Efficiency is going to be key. And one of the huge drivers for efficiency is going to be automation. We have a, a great set of people working on innovation. 
we have innovation taking place in all departments, but to name a few, you know, in our fleet services group, we're heavily automating in uh, electrification and autonomous vehicles. We're ahead of the curve on that. I think, I think we're probably uh, best of class on what we're doing there. Uh, Jimmy Schaefer's IDS team has a lot of great automation that we've POC'd and proven that it works. And we are now rolling that out into production on, for our customers where it makes sense. And then in, inside of IT, we're working on a lot of things on the analytical side. Uh, as an example, we're doing a pretty good project with the transportation team on fleet maintenance to give real-time visibility to, to where our customer's fleet is. So we have lots of um, innovation and automation taking place across a lot of different departments. And I think we're ahead of the curve with a lot of our uh, competitors. And I also think we're well positioned for our customers' asks. In general, you know, we have two main software packages. On our transportation side, we use a Trimble product by the name of TMW. Now, what we've done is we've partnered with them to bring a better package to us. Our ELD devices in our trucks, the analytics they give us and the monitoring they give us inside of our fleets on the telematics and et cetera. Over on the distribution side, our go-to product is Manhattan, and we work with Manhattan weekly on their roadmap and what we're going to get out of them for our big tier one customers. What we've done in the last year really got traction is adding a great partnership with a company by the name of Softion. And Softion is filling the market for our tier two and tier three warehouse customers. Their, their technology advanced and they can do a lot of the things that traditionally we would have considered tier one. So we have good partnerships with both of those companies on the warehousing side and we'll stay invested with them on their roadmaps. Now we have a whole bunch of other software products that are more peripheral systems that we use. And there's a lot of innovation going on in our storage arena, in our compute arena, in our security arena user productivity tools, et cetera, that we continue to heavily invest in. Those things all tie together into a technology landscape and roadmap that we feel pretty confident we're poised for the future. Let me first say that we've done a lot of work this last year on integrating our acquisition. All of the acquisitions that have taken place to date will all be operating inside of our same system, our same networks, our same collaboration suite, our same identity suite by the first quarter of 2021. So different journeys on all those things I mentioned, but we're, you know, we're hundred percent done on some and we're 80% done on others, but come first quarter of 2021, all of the NFI systems and people will all be in the same system. So that's a huge um, unlock for us to try to communicate with our customers in the same fashion, in a more holistic fashion. We also have API technology application level interfaces that we're prepared to deploy with any of our customers. So any of our customers that wants to see real-time inventory visibility we have plug and play APIs that we can expose to them and we can share inventory real time uh, between ourselves. On our transportation side for our customers that wanna see where their fleets are, we have real time fleet visibility now that can be rolled out in 2021. So we're doing a lot of things that we think meet the needs of our customers um, from a giving them the right visibility into their assets in our system. I'm most excited about seeing another record year. I think NFI is very well positioned for this uh, landscape we're all living in right now. Uh, I don't see anything slowing us down, um, you know, all the way from the beginning of the life cycle on the sales. I think we have a tremendous amount of momentum. We have a great reputation 
with some of the biggest companies in the world and they're coming to us asking us for more and more and you know from an engineering perspective and an innovation perspective an it perspective hr perspective i really feel like we're poised to have another uh, great record year so uh, very excited about that